Hello everyone and welcome to Control Engineering and Control Theory Tutorials. In this Control Engineering Tutorial, we will learn how to compute inverse Laplace transform by using partial fraction expansion and cover-up method. This tutorial will be split into three parts. In the first part that you're currently watching, we will consider transfer function and complex expression with real and distinct poles. In the second part of this tutorial series, we will consider transfer functions and complex expressions with complex distinct poles. And finally, in the third part of this tutorial series, we will consider transfer functions and complex expressions with repeated poles. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. In this video tutorial, I will explain the cover-up method. This method is a very powerful approach for computing the partial fraction expansion and for computing the inverse Laplace transform. However, before I explain this powerful method, let's first go back to the basics. That is, let's explain how to compute the partial fraction expansion by using the high school level mathematics. Okay, let us consider this transfer function. This transfer function has two distinct poles. They are at s is equal to 2 and s is equal to 3. To remind you, the poles are zeros of the polynomial in the denominator. Now, let us assume that our goal is to compute the inverse Laplace transform of this function. If we can somehow decompose this transfer function into the following form, where a and b are constants that need to be determined, then our problem would be solved since we can easily compute the inverse Laplace transforms of the terms a over s minus 2 and b over s minus 3. From a table of inverse Laplace transforms, we know that the inverse Laplace transform of the expression that has this form is e to the power minus a t. If we apply this rule to our problem given over here, then we have inverse Laplace transform of W of s is equal to a multiplying e to the power 2t plus b multiplying e to the power 3t. Consequently, our problem boils down to the problem of computing the constants a and b. This equation is actually referred to as the partial fraction expansion. To compute this decomposition or expansion, let us first use the high school level mathematics. The high school level mathematics and approach originates from computing integrals of rational functions. Namely, from this equation, we can obtain the equation 3 if we simply group the terms in the denominator and in the numerator we will obtain this expression. From the last equation, that is from the equation 3, we obtain the equation number 4. We simply group the terms multiplying the corresponding powers of s. Our goal is to determine the constants a and b. So how to do that? Well, we need to equate the equation number 4 with our original equation number 1. And as the consequence, we obtain the equation number 5. The left-hand side should be equal to the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, we have this expression, and on the left-hand side, we have this expression. Now, the expressions on both sides of this equation are actually polynomials in S. Two polynomials are equal if their coefficients multiplying the corresponding powers of s are equal. Consequently, from the equation 5, we obtain a system of linear equations given by the equation number 6. 
What do we have over here? Let's explain. The left hand side can be written obviously as 0 multiplying s plus 1 and we need to do the following. The terms multiplying s on both sides should be equal. Consequently 0 is equal a plus b. On the other hand this term should be equal to this term over here, so 1 is equal minus 3a minus 2b. By solving this system, we obtain a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 1. And you can easily verify that this is the solution. For example, by substituting the result over here, we will obtain that actually 0 is equal to 0. And consequently, these are the solutions. We can also use MATLAB to verify our computations. For example, here is the MATLAB script. First, I define a symbolic variable s. Then I define my expression and I use this function part frac of my expression to compute the partial fraction expansion. And as the result, I obtain this expression. And this expression is actually the expression we obtain since a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 1 a is equal to minus 1 and b is equal to 1. And that's precisely what MATLAB is giving us. This high school level approach for computing partial fraction expansion can also be applied to more complex functions with a large number of poles. However, it becomes tedious to solve a system of linear equations to compute every coefficient of the partial fraction expansion. Consequently, we need to search for an alternative method to compute the partial fraction expansion. And this alternative method that works very well in practice is the cover-up method that I will explain in the sequel. Let us consider a general form of a complex function given by the equation number 7. This function can be factorized and represented in the form given by the equation number 8. The constant z1, z2 up to zm are called as zeros of the function. The constants p1, p2 up to pn are called as poles of the function. For example, we can see that when s is equal to any of the zeros, then this function becomes zero. On the other hand, when s is equal to any of the poles, the function value approaches infinity for real poles. The poles and zeros can be real or complex. Now, by assuming that the poles are distinct, we can write the function w of s in the partial fraction expansion form given by the equation number 9. We take the first pole and write the corresponding expression. Then we take the second pole and write the corresponding expression and we do that until the end pole. And c1, c2 and cn are constants. Our goal is to develop the general procedure for computing the constant c1, c2 up to cn. Now, let us explain how to compute an arbitrary constant ci. Let us multiply this expression with s minus pi, where pi is the i-th pole. As the result, we obtain this expression. Now, let us see what happens when we evaluate this expression for s is equal to pi. Obviously, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 0, and all other terms except the term corresponding to ci go to 0. And consequently, s minus pi multiplying w of s evaluated at s equal to pi is actually our constant ci. And that's how we determine the constant ci. Once we compute ci, we can simply take the inverse Laplace transform of the corresponding term and compute the time version of that term. And obviously the time version is e to the power pi times t, where pi is the pole. Now, let us do the example. Let us consider this function. s plus 1 multiplying s plus 3 divided by s plus 2 multiplying s plus 4. And let us assume that this is a transfer function of a dynamical system. Our goal is to compute the step response of the system. 
The step response of the system is obtained by setting input to be 1 over s. Consequently, over here we multiply w of s by 1 over s and we obtain this expression. And we want to compute an inverse Laplace transform of this expression in order to compute the step response in the time domain. Let us apply everything that we learned so far to this approach. What are the poles? The poles are s is equal to minus 2, s is equal to minus 4, and s is equal to 0. And consequently, we will have the following terms, c1 over s, c2 over s plus 2, and c3 over s plus 4. Now, by using the previously derived formula, we obtain this expression. To compute c1, we take this expression, we multiply this expression by s, and we evaluate this expression at 0. So let's see what happens. Obviously, we obtain this expression, and if we evaluate this expression at 0, we obtain 1 multiplying 3 over 2 times 4, and that's 3 over 8. That's our C1. Let's compute C2. To compute C2, we take our original expression, we multiply it by s plus 2, and we evaluate the expression at the corresponding pole. And as a result, we obtain this expression, and once we evaluate it, we obtain 1 over 4. Similarly, to obtain C3, we take this expression, we multiply it by s plus 4, and evaluate the expression in our pole. And as the result, we obtain this expression, and once we evaluate this expression at minus 4, we obtain 3 over 8. Consequently, our factorized expression becomes 3 over 8 multiplying 1 over s plus 1 over 4 multiplying 1 over s plus 2 plus 3 over 8 multiplying 1 over s plus 4. And we're almost done. We need to apply the inverse Laplace transform to this expression, and we obtain this expression, 3 over 8, because the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s is actually a heaviside function or a step function, over here we have 1 over 4 multiplying e to the minus 2t, and over here we have 3 over a multiplying e to the minus 4t. And that's it. That's the final expression. Next, let's see how to do that in MATLAB. Here's the script. We define the symbolic variable, we define our original expression, we compute partial fraction expansion, and we compute the inverse Laplace transform. And as a result, we obtain the expression given over here. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day.